So there we are. We've gone through and done an assessment, kind of giving you an idea, a quick overview of how to look at this, how fast you should be going through all of this. Now I'm going to take my sample off the slide and you know if you're worried about maybe your hands aren't real steady um, and you might be as you pull that slide off you might be um, scraping up against your um, objective just dial in the 4x lens so now we've got plenty of working space. I'm going to take my um, slide off the stage and all, what I do to clean them up is just take a little Kleenex or a little bit of chem wipe material and tap that so that I'm taking up any excess moisture and then I just pull my slide out make sure that I'm wiping it off that I've gotten rid of any grease spots any any grunge on that slide I'm gonna do the same thing with my cover slip so I'm gonna um, clean that up pretty well get all the dirt and anything left over from that sample and I'm ready to go with my next sample and I'm not using a cover slip with every sample I'm not using up a slide every sample you're not left over with lots and lots of things to clean up might just look to the you know into the a bright light or something make sure that this is all properly cleaned up if it's not looking real clean what you do is there we go the cleaning method of choice by microbiologists um, pretty simple it's not going to take a lot of effort to be ready for my next sample I will typically leave the first sample sitting there. If I am not going to do any more samples, I'll just leave it sitting in my little um, measuring cup. If, um, if I have other samples to do, uh, I may want to have a waste container. So the samples I've done previously this morning, um, and I threw them out, they go in there. Now I'm going to want to save some of this sample. Because I want to see if my protozoa or my fungi might start growing, you know, what's the growth potential in this sample. So I'm just going to mix this up and pour some into that container. So there we are. And then I will um, know that tomorrow I want to look at these. So these are a couple other soils that I looked at already this morning. And I'm just going to save this material. Tomorrow morning I'll shake these up put a drop on my microscope slide, put it under here and see if I have any protozoa that have woken up. See if my bacteria are growing, see if my fungi are germinating. What's the potential for things to really take off and do well in the soil? Or is there really nobody home? And there is no way to get that biology up and moving because there is no good biology in that soil. It's an important question to answer. Do I really have to go out and put some good compost? Do I have to go out and put a little wood compost? Do I need an egg extract? Do I need to make tea and get that out on the soil to get it moving in the right direction? At least have a hope that my roots, when the roots grow into that soil, will be able to wake up the organisms that those root systems require to protect those roots from disease, to do the nutrient cycling in that soil. Your soil contains all the nutrients to grow your plant what you're lacking most likely especially after looking at this kind of sample we are lacking those organisms that will take those mineral nutrients that are in your soil and convert them into a plant available form every year your soil makes more mineral material available no matter how many yields you've taken off of that that land your soil is replenishing the mineral nutrients because it's coming from the bedrock if you run out of sand, silt, and clay and organic matter, then you can worry. So those of you who have run out of those materials, come talk to me. We'll tell you how to fix that. But I don't think anybody has run out of sand, silt, clay, and or organic matter in their soils. And so we're not there. How many years do we have left in your soils with plenty of nutrition for your plant? Ooh, you know, what, a couple billion years? So I don't think we have to worry about that. This concern that we get from people who measure soluble nutrients in your soil and they ignore the huge quantity of mineral material that is not in a soluble form. They are misleading you and we need to stop putting on those inorganic fertilizers. They are not necessary. So there we go. Um, we have finished doing our samples so let's turn off the microscope make sure that we've got our lowest magnification lens dialed in and put our cover back on 
our microscope so we're protecting it from dust and dirt and then this is all ready for us to come back tomorrow morning and look at those samples and see what the protozoa or the growth and the bacteria and the fungi we can be looking at more samples we're all set up and ready to go so there we are using your microscope in a nutshell